Good morning, and thank you for joining us at today's webinar. The purpose of this webinar is to talk about a new product. Um, it's actually an old product. We had a, more than one version of it. Um, it's called the Jump Kit, and it's a construction kit for Civil 3D. It allows you to make templates faster and manage your templates in a reasonable way. And my name is Tish Shulman. I'm the president of More Competency and the mind behind the jump, so to speak. There you go. So a um, couple of key issues here. Um, we talk about the jump as though it was a platform. It is indeed a platform. Um, we think of it that way. That's the way we develop. So we have a slightly different perspective than those of you who work on the street about what's going on behind this whole thing. And from our perspective, Civil 3D is an engine, and we actually provide the fuel that makes it actually produce drawings for you. And really, it's about reducing all the work that you have to do to keep that engine running from one release to another, from one upgrade to another, and all that stuff. The other thing is that the jump is also a process solution, meaning that it has a structure and a way of doing things, and that's in something that we call the jump project. And even if you have a free copy of a product, you actually have that project. It's not just a demo. It's actually a continuous development environment. So you can work and manage in the same structure without pulling your hair out and going crazy as the world changes, which it will and does for all of us. So there's a system, and it's a managed change process, and it's just using the principles that we all know of iterative design, and we happen to use the plan, do, check, and act model, um, and that's just a set of words, and we could replace those with assess and you know other words, but we all pretty much get the idea. You're gonna come up with a written idea about you, what you're going to do, you're going to execute it, find out what's wrong with it, because things will go wrong, you're going to act to check those things, and that's going to create a new plan, and you're going to move forward. Same principle that a SEAL team has when they get on the helicopter to go get rid of Obama. Here's the big picture of the jump, uh, this is up on the website, and Where's the jump kit kind of fit in? Uh, up at the top here is what IOB does. Um, it's actually a single system, works as a project template structure, works up here. Uh, most of us, if you're attending this session, do some of this down here. In other words, you know, get a project template ready or uh, get your company template ready uh, to do stuff. And the jump kit fits right at the bottom of this pile here. And the platform is down here. It is a set of these system templates would each be a different jump kit from our perspective. And as you can see, there are conventions naming ones all over the place in this model. And those are critical to making Civil 3D function because it depends almost completely on what you call things and name things. Hence, the jump platform has a whole set of standards that are all named, documented in detail, that ships with even our less ex least expensive, and you don't have to even, you can buy them and use them and employ those naming conventions in your styles, and that will save you a lot of tea. Now I don't have to worry about that and think about that, and your stuff will actually work with our stuff, just because you use the same naming conventions. So one of the things people always, the first question I was getting, I wrote a blog post about this is, hey, I'm uploading the thing and somebody goes, hey, I see this new product, what's in it? Well, actually what's in it, while the specifics are pretty important, isn't the most important question. Why is a lot more important than what? <laughs> um, in Civil 3D, uh, our culture is, oh, I've got my new AutoCAD product or Autodesk product and LDT product, and we customized it to work in our little world. And that worked okay when it was just AutoCAD or just LDT. The LDT got a little bit more complicated, but when we went to Civil 3D, which is model-based, it has 
hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of styles. Uh, just just to work, it has to have that many styles. Uh, I had a friend of mine who works at Autodesk, he's, you know, been at Autodesk in the civil side. Uh, you've probably seen him publicly speak a few times. And he asked me a very interesting question back at AU last year. How many styles do you need to have a basic template for Civil 3D? And since I do that all the time for cities and larger firms, and people pay me to do this all the time, I'm, well, I don't really sit here and count the fleas, so to speak. I had to think about it for a bit. And I said, well, probably it's six to 800. I mean, we have in 11, when he asked me the question, we had 26 features. Um, and some of those features like alignments, profile views, etc., can have hundreds of permutations necessary to get plan sets out. So uh, it adds up pretty quickly. Even the general markers collection uh, has to have quite a few different kinds of markers. You could probably, if you were ruthless about it and tried to cut it down to hardly any, you might get down to somewhere around 500, I think. Uh, but if you were doing 10 miles of roadway um, for a state DOT and county government at the same time, you may need, you know, a lot more than that. So the issue with Civil 3D, and I think the key one is, are you going to customize the whole thing from scratch? Uh, we decided that we thought that Civil 3D needed something uh, as a basic platform um, to build these styles upon that everybody could agree on. And uh, Autodesk thought that was a good idea, put us on the 10 uh, DVD. Now, you know, country of Russia and some other Eastern European countries are, you know, do product based on our platform from 10. Uh, the jump kit is, as I had in that picture, is a system template. It allows you, it's a set of Civil 3D standards and styles, right? And it's a package and a way to maintain this customization so you don't pull your hair out and go crazy. Uh, it was all designed to make that process as easy and fast as possible so you could make task-based or project-based or jurisdiction-based or engineer-based templates. Uh, you know, you may have one principle, I want it this way and I don't care. Uh, and that's a reality for many of us. So uh, how do you make that something you can get accomplished, maintain? Because it's really all about, you know, what it's going to cost you to do this. Uh, Autodesk has always had the thing, we're just going to ship some examples, you know, do some demos, and, you know, they'll have their AEs make some fancy styles, but you can't get a hold of them anywhere unless somebody gives them to you. And if you really sit down and figure out what this is really going to cost you in man hours, uh, a good set of styles is going to cost you at least 20K, and it's probably going to cost you 10 to 20K a year to keep maintaining them because things change. And they don't tell you what changes. And um, they aren't going to tell you what changes because sometimes they don't even know they changed it. Take that. Take this from me who works with a development team fairly frequently. So there's this recurring cost of ownership sitting behind Civil 3D uh, that has actually created a lot of resistance. And principles aren't stupid. If it's going to take you five months just to make the thing so we can use it, why am I going to put this on your desktop? Let's stay in LDT. And that's gone on in spite of economics, right, in good times and bad times uh, for quite a while. And then we have the problem of every time there's a new upgrade or a new update, not to mention a new release like 11 to 12, what's going to happen? Are we going to have to fix it? Well, you know. Okay, and then we have projects that are in the midst where we really, it would really benefit us to go up to 12 in the middle of this project. What's going to happen to all my work that's half done? <clears throat> is it going to chew? <coughs> Excuse me. Is it going to chew up stuff? Okay. Well, got to find some way to test that and make sure it's not going to kill you. Um, and most of the time, it's like I don't even have time to test it. I got to get the project out the door. So we just stay in the current release or avoid the update because it's just too painful to do. And really, if this was simple or easy or cheap. <laughs> there'd be hundreds of people doing it and there really aren't. So we're working on building a platform that's built from 
by its design to reduce all those costs and make this simple for you, whether you're a little teeny company or a big huge company. And use this slide a lot. I'm just going to bang through here. And there are a lot of parts in Civil 3D. And every single one of these parts plays an important part about things. And some of them can take you an awfully long time to figure out and get implemented or working. Hey, sheet sets. You know, all by itself, right? So uh, some key ones here is this project template thing. Project templates are a lot more important than they look like. Uh, whether you use Vault or data shortcuts, how you store your stuff is really important in Civil 3D. But we're really talking about what we call a working drawing template, producing something for the survey guys that's maybe different from the design guys because they obviously don't need the same stuff right in every single drawing and we got a 3500 styles number um, like I said how do you count these things what's a prototype style that could you could produce 25 styles off of it in 15 minutes uh, by doing copy change this copy change that copy change this uh, what's that worth in terms of a style count that builds consistent styles that let you do rotations and all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, I'm not sure, so you know, uh, I know we're at somewhere around the 5,000 range now in when we released 12 of the jump kit uh, that are all NCS compliant. Um, the jump is a personalization process, so we think of this as you're just going to change as little as possible to make it all work. And that development project that we talked about real briefly includes a common project data set and that's there so you can test stuff and your data isn't messing with you. Okay, and uh, we felt that that was so important to everybody being successful at Civil 3D that we just include it with every single product we got. Okay, uh, some of those data sets are based on templates like the free one with some kinky stuff in them. Um, the IOB ships with a clean project data set with no kinky stuff in it, um, pretty much, and uh, clean styles that are all plot and all that stuff. And, you know, here's the plan, do, check, loop. Uh, to repeat myself, if you don't do this, nothing that we give you would really help you. So if you don't have a plan about what you want to change, you can't just jump into customizing or personalizing Civil 3D and go, oh, let's kind of wing it. Um, because what will happen is you will find yourself making a hundred different things that no one will ever use just because you found you could do those cool things and you'll waste a lot of time doing that and a lot of people waste a lot of time doing that kind of thing okay um, then you may find that these things that your principal wants or your local jurisdiction wants um, may be impossible to do in Civil 3D so because the city says we all have to show the top of line pipe where we can't use Civil 3D pipes because they say that <laughs> um, and those things look like they happen and then there are ways around those things uh, and then there are ways to inventively get by those things uh, which you may not even know so what you don't know can cause you to waste a whole bunch of time. The key issue is how do you, once you even figure out what you want, um, how do you store it and then how do you deliver it to people and we use that idea of there's some known good. My, this is the right template you should be using Bob in the next cubicle and where is it and how do you make sure that that keeps working for everybody and that's usually what we're talking about when we're talking about personalizing, making this thing work on the street. Sorry, I just want to take a look at something. Okay. So, what's in there? Um, let's, uh, you know, hop over the PDF thing. First big piece uh, is this thing. Um, Jump kit comes with two major components, um, and we'll talk about those in detail. I'll kind of show you a little bit of this. One of the big components is the symbol set, which is every single drawing all cleaned, right? They're all civil 3D. They're all named by a naming convention. 
which is a block naming convention based on um, NCS-like standards, NCS major keywords, in fact. So, you know, pavement markings, you know, are pretty easy to understand. And, you know, this is just the pavement marking ones. Uh, yeah, there's traffic control ones, right, for signaling, traffic signage ones, uh, piles and piles of utility ones, and not all of these are in IOB, things like fuel oil, industrial waste, and all kinds of other things, all done to an NCS standard you know, irrigation water sprinklers in lots of count sizes, right? Okay, so we could go through here and there are um, somewhere in the order of magnitude of about a thousand blocks in here. There are variations of many blocks so that you could do it this way or that way, depending upon how you just like it and prefer it. Okay, uh, core site features, all the kind of stuff that we have in our many suburban plans, I guess, would be the best way to put it, uh, property corners, and we can go on and on. So there's this big giant block library, and in addition to the block library, there are collections of point styles uh, for all these types of things. So one of the big things, and I'm going to hop over to Windows Explorer and kind of root around with what you might get, um, you'll get a simple set, and a set of there's a simple set in here, and here's the NCS401, and uh, let's just, you know, uh, let's just pick utilities. And as you can see, uh, there are individual folders full of individual drawing files uh, of each of those blocks, so you can make yourself an instant tool palette for fuel oil blocks. Great. Um, all of them are consistently named. There are also point style collection files. And you will notice that for every single kind of utility, there are three versions of this. So if you don't like the elliptical tops and want uh, vaults with filleted or just pure rectangulars, right, they're, you know, drawing collections of all those, uh, block collection drawings of every single kind of block. Right, so uh, the symbol sets not only got the AutoCAD raw stuff, but collections of drawings, right, so that you could just squirt those point styles into your drawing and you're ready to go with traffic signals, right, in Civil 3D. Whether you like the traffic signal blocks or not, uh, you at least have a name where you can rename your own blocks and replace them and put them there and go to town and keep it up and you won't be pulling your hair out next time around. Right? So big key piece is the NCS 4.0 simple set. Um, it is got more than the NCS terms of symbols by a long shot. Uh, if you just took the free stuff or even bought it from somebody, uh, God forbid, uh, you would probably find that that um, set of drawing blocks are named all over the place. Uh, some of them actually in contain bad stuff. All of them contain things like attributes in them, or many of them contain attributes in them with weird textiles and references to line types that don't exist and all kinds of weird, bizarre stuff like that. And, and we constructed a complete new, based on the graphics, what the graphics looks like in a standardized way, this whole giant symbol set. And pretty much covers what most people need most of the time. Uh, and it does it in a very NCS compliant way with a very standard, um, understandable naming convention so that you can, um, uh, you got a lot of choice and you got a lot of capability and you can move forward. You don't have to worry about, oh my God, now we need fuel oil manholes. Okay, all right, what would we do, all right? So that's the first big piece of what's in there. Um, and let's hop back over to where we're in PowerPoint. So it is indeed this construction and maintenance toolkit Everything is designed to work together and it works for a standard. So there will be other jump kits. Uh, there are currently a couple of other targeted DOT type ones, right? They are ordered collections of by feature drawings. So that's what we're gonna look at next, plus the symbol set that we just talked about and looked at at least from a high level in terms of what's going on in Windows Explorer. Before we hopped over, I want to come back here and notice that there are 
multiple collections of styles. So there is not just one gigantic pile of styles here. You have actually multiple versions of it, and you will create your own versions of some of these uh, because that's how one of the key ways that you can personalize this thing. So if it's an instant on product, and there will be multiple instant on products fairly quickly here, um, you, there will be collections from those, so you know what went in there and can decide, oh, that will work fine, except I need more alignment or more profiles or more of whatever you need to do, okay, and you have a way of storing it. So all those things are true. So if we go up to the jump kit, you will have a styles folder. It pretty much exists with this thing, though there may be additional line type files, there may be additional layer standards files, all stored as layer LAS files for the most part, right? And some other little things that come along with a specific jump kit depending upon where it's targeted at. But as you can see, there is a by feature drawing uh, of every single kind of feature in Civil 3D, right, in the Jump Kits collection. And there is a numerical order here, <laughs> okay? And that comes out of the tool space, but also then numerical order if you start assembling things, right, uh, bears, right, and makes it work in a consistent way. So everything, if I open this drawing in Civil 3D, in it would only be all the styles from general, nothing else, only those layers. So you could see if you have problems figuring out where something goes, for instance, in Civil 3D, where is that layer coming from? Those layer lists are in each one of these drawings in ILB. So it's a, also works as a debugging tool to figure out why it's going there, not here, which sometimes can be totally mystifying in Civil 3D. Okay, so we had our styles collection. Then we have above that something called simple, which is, <laughs> you know, I kind of joke and go, why did I call it simple? Oh my God. Uh, maybe it should be called medium <laughs> at this point. Uh, uh, it will have more styles. <laughs> Uh, some of the collections are similar in IOB to Simple, uh, but many of them, for instance, alignments and profile views will have more stuff in here and deeper levels of style detail, uh, particularly for labels and give you more choices. And there are more what we call prototype styles where you're going to just have one example beginning top style and all the other versions so, you know, existing and proposed of that style have not all been made, but it sits there so that you can create new ones really quickly. Okay, so, uh, so there's that whole collection, and many of these are, you know, the same as, some of these are the same as the way it is in IOP, and some of them have more stuff. And then beyond and above that, is what we call complex, and for the really complex features, alignments, profile views, pipes, and pipe networks, for example, where you can have lots and lots of variety, but you really don't want all this stuff. Do I need complex structures for electrical stuff in every single template that I make? Complex structures for water stuff in every single template I make? No, but it would be sure nice to be able to go somewhere root around in that and find stuff that you'd need. Same would be true for profile views. You know, how many scales of profile views or section views do you actually need in your production template? Okay, do you need stuff to do one to five for 20s and one to five for 30s, or one to five for 40s? Or, you know, depends upon the scale of your project and how much of that stuff you need. Whereas you get down to IOB and they all just have simple 10X ones right? Um, these collections may have more stuff. You also notice something else that's true is that the styles are also collected in drawings with no sets at all so that you don't aren't burdened by, uh, you know, our idea or anybody else's idea of what styles could be collected for your alignment label sets group labels. So you can just get to the styles without those and make up your own sets and your own set names, right, to do the kind of work you need to do out of those styles. 
So, uh, and that gives you a pretty good idea of what's in there. Uh, counts for drawing, not even going to try. Okay, so you get an idea. So as we saw, there are also a folder, you know, with base drawings in it. And those drawings are sort of like starter drawings uh, for creating a brand new template. So you typically start one of those drawings, do a save as, and start pouring in what you want into your template. And we'll go over that process and how that works in just a few minutes. And as we saw, they're IOB stuff, simple stuff to complex stuff, and that important My Styles folder, which starts out empty, but you better fill up. So, okay, I need the, to start assembling and you will decide I need to make some changes to some things. I can't stand the way you did the profile views and our jurisdiction demands that they be done exactly this way. So you take the classic jump styles and you modify them in a, a way and one way you could do that would be simply copy the simple down, give it your own name, and make the modifications in that drawing without having to modify er everywhere in a template independent of the other stuff, test it in the drawing, make sure, sure it all works, right, and now you have a new one and you can squirt it into all your templates whenever you're ready to update your templates. So you have the ability to also have in your My Styles folder uh, if you're a multiple site location, you work in multiple states, which a good number of our customers do, uh, they have to deal with stuff in Virginia, and then they have to deal with stuff in Wisconsin, and they have to deal with stuff in California. And while those you're in the same company, the offices don't even do the same kind of work or have the same kind of project. And so that may be office by office, right? You may have to maintain that sort of a collection of styles and templates uh, based on that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, you know, we saw the symbol set and went through and da da da. And so um, I'm going to see if, if anybody's got a question, why don't you raise your hand at this point, everybody fairly clear on what's in there, at least at a beef level. And hopefully that will be clear. If you get that, that all makes sense. Hey, just give me a hand raise. Raise your hand on the little icon. Okay. That all sort of makes sense, I hope. Okay. Um, let's see how it works. Okay. That's the important thing. A um, couple of little things. We're going to hop over and... Okay. Um, this is 12. Fired it up. You know, here's the style collection that ships with Civil 3D. And I get a you know few point styles. I think they're like 30. Okay, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, how many surface styles do you need? Yeah, I don't know. Depends upon what you're going to do. Uh, there isn't anything in here, for example, for you know, cut and fill. Kind of, oh, hey, they did cut and fill bandits. Okay, okay. So somewhere along life. So this is the standard uh, AutoCAD drawing example template. Uh, grossly inadequate to actually produce a real drawing on a plotted sheet. Okay, and we need to create another template. Um, I'm going to change my options here, and I'm just going to point my profile currently at. Um, yeah, let's go down here and point down here. All I'm doing is uh, changing where my templates are coming from and that sort of thing over in the prospector. I'm going to go to my master view and I got drawing templates and of course because it's Civil 3D you have to t remember to refresh it and I have an IOB survey and I'm just going to uh, I need to create it, something to compare here so I'm just going to create a simple new drawing My Civil 3D is waking up here. 
Okay. And of course, you know, hey, I better make sure I'm in the right coordinate system and all that kind of stuff. And the Nemo project happens to be arbitrarily in this coordinate system. And one of the key things about a template is, you know, what object layers are the root templates going to? Right? Where are you throwing the key feature data to uh, for the most part? Okay, so that's not absolute. Um, so the object layers, the object settings are in a key important base template type thing. Um, I'm going to save this guy. Don't want to do it in my drawing. Want to do it down in my project here. Got a 12 project running. I'm just going to save it to the root gear, and uh, we're going to use. We're just going to make a a different set of point styles, right? And. Now we need some points in. We need to do a few things for getting some points in. So this goes up the symbol set at the same time while we do it. Uh, that's kind of where I'm going at here. I got a description key sets. Let's get some priorities here. Um, we'll take the survey one. It's on top. It assigns point styles, but no label styles. Okay. Uh, we need a little bit of data. Um, we'll go to the home tab. You know, go to points. Go to point creation tools, and we're just going to drop a point file in here, and we'll grab this one. Okay, and it figures out, right? No, it's not an EZ. It's a PNEZ common down limited. So I get my descriptions. <laughs> okay, All right? So. You know, some fun stuff going on there in 12. And by the way, you can tweak this list to do the kinds of things that you already do, all to do and customize it in 12. So that's one of the cool new things all right, that kind of came along almost in with advantage backs to sort of halfway through the release of 11. And so now I got some points, and of course I got point groups, and you know once again they need to be updated, and stuff goes into some, and just to make things simple, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna take my all points, and slam it to the top, hit apply, hit OK, and still nothing showing on my screen, and everybody's going, oh you know zoom to them please, okay. So we end up with, you know, points, symbols everywhere. And one of the things, you know, oh man, you know, I hate this IP symbol, right? I mean, who came up with this? This is, you know, the NCS standard symbol for an IP. It's this little circle with a giant IP next to it, okay, for found iron pipes, okay? Well, I want to change that. Well, you know, hey, this is the jump, so almost all that stuff's easily changeable. Uh, that's over in the settings. That's a point style. And we're using a V1. And that would be a V point. Or it would be a V monument. Uh, yep, okay. And as you can see, they're all IP2s. I got an IP2 built right in here, and I could edit this guy and, you know, just change my marker. I would like that to go to that uh, VP2. Oh, okay, thanks. Okay, so now I've tweaked my one drawing, and they all change easy enough. Hey, I want to resize that I could do that. Uh, got a couple other things maybe I want to change, and now things get a little bit more dicey here. Um, maybe all the time, right? I don't think I have very many vaults in here. Don't happen to have a lot of vaults in this collection of points. Okay, 
So you get an idea that that's just modifying a style, but now the VP Mon style changed in this one drawing, and I made a minor edit to it. Is that a big deal? Well, now it has to go out to the Department of the Air Force um, in a base and you know, Bob didn't like it, so he changed it, and now this style is different. And in 12, you know, we go back and, you know, hammer this guy, okay, and we couldn't 11 with import styles. I may, however, want to build that in my template, okay, so uh, to do that, all I have to do is change the single one point style in my template, and every drawing started from there would be okay, and I could use style import tools. Right in 12, okay, and say, whoops, okay, so I gotta save this rhyme, okay, yeah, right, and I can use style import, and I'm going too fast for civil 3D, and now I want to point this, right, at my template in my corner project, um, which happens to be this one that I used. I hope, right? And it makes this massive assessment and, you know, sorts through them all and figure out what conflicts and what doesn't, right? Okay. And so really what am I looking for um, in terms of styles? Do you, do I care about everything? Do I want all the settings smacked back? This is a very important checkbox. Okay. Uh, if you uncheck this, you will get more stuff in here. All right, and it says, you know, I got all these feature styles, and most of the ones here, right, are all going to be, what, what, what's going to be different, right? Well, let's go root around our point style. It found just this one conflict, all right? So really, all I care about is I'm going to uncheck everything and check only the ones with conflicts. And interestingly enough, that will also whack all my standards, even though they were made from the same template. Crazy. Okay. And that's all I'm going to whack. So I'm going to whack this back. And, you know, now I, you know, undid. All right. And notice that there were a hundred styles that are just standard. <laughs> okay. By the way just to give you some idea of how many of those are. And notice that um, some key things like, you know, the names of all the blocks while they come in uh, cannot be overwritten, okay? So once again, Autodesk, the AutoCAD principle is that we're not going to overwrite and I fix my drawing. So we learned something about the import tool here, right? But, uh, you know, I want a template that always does that or uh, has some other stuff in it. So I left that drawing as an example. We'll just save that guy. We're going to park it for a minute. And so 3D catch up with me. And what I wanted to do is go up into my jump kit. Um, I'll go to the 12 and do the 12 one. I think I've got in my styles collection, hopefully I have a base drawing in 12, yep, okay, and um, I'm going to um, use my object layers, okay, this is going to be my base, and I'm going to use this as a, create a new survey drawing here, okay, uh, just for my survey guys, and it's going to have uh, some different kinds of vaults and those sort of things, and I want to put different stuff in here. And so I'm going to open, and hey, now I want to do immediately right away, I want to save this thing, okay? And, you know, I'm going to go to styles, and since this is my other one, I'm just going to leave it in the root here, and this is going to be, right? 121 survey imperial and we'll just go FO vault 
So it's going to be an FO version, so it's going to have filleted utilities in it with point styles that use filleted vaults all over the place instead of the elliptical ones that are the NCS one. And so I made, I'm just making this as a drawing now. No rocket science. And in it, just to be clear, bet it. There are no blocks. In it, right, there are home layers. Whoops. Undo. Hit the wrong icon. Layers. Oh. Okay, so it's got, you know, a collection of NCS, <coughs> some small number of NCS core layers in here. Okay. Well, we, you know, let's see if we can uh, purge those guys. And I don't want any of those layers in here. See, no, so all the layers are actually in use, even in this default place, because there are right some settings associated so you even got layers even though wait a minute you know I don't have anything is there anything in my drawing okay there's nothing in my drawing so even a blank template already is making some layers because there are objects going theoretically to layers that must exist okay so now we want to put some things in here okay so uh, I'm going to use, uh, I could use, uh, you know, in 12, I might go and go, oh, wait a minute, I could use that import tool now. Okay, and say, okay, I want to import styles, and you can. I will warn you that there are, however, some glaring little holes in import styles that are documented, some not quite so well, where it will not bring all the styles over. You will find things just don't come over uh, via import styles yet. So uh, pay attention, read the documentation. So there are some things that do not come over this way. There are some things that do not come over with the method I'm going to show you right now, which works in 11 and 12, which is, okay, first thing I need is We'll go to here and work for my styles collection. And I want from IOB, I really like, you know, all the general stuff from IOB. That works fine. They got the right markers. I don't need anything more than that. Okay. And so I just go into one and slam it into my drawing. <coughs> Remember, I'm making myself a new survey only template here. And I just want to explode everything. I don't want to specify it anywhere. <coughs> and now, wonder of wonders, right? I will now have marker styles, right? All set up and all ready to go. Cool. That was pretty easy, right? Um, uh, one nice trick I could use from this. Uh, um, whatever I want to call it, idea of import styles was, well, I could get the settings from my old template, which everybody liked pretty much, and you'll find that, uh, let's just pick um, uh, something like services, which has a fairly simple one, and it has default styles. These are all standard. Well, I don't want to really do that. Okay, I'd really like to have those settings in here. So in 12, this is a cool thing that I could do is I can import. Oh, yeah, right. Got to save here. Okay. And hit import. And what I wanted was my, you know, my IOB template, right? And I want to open that. Uh, I want to uncheck everything, all right? And I want to check undeletes, and I want to uncheck overwrites, all right? So actually, what's going to be here? There, no, we don't want any of these added ones either, right? See, they're all unchecked. Just to be clear, what, what's going on here? Okay, ones in gray. I'm not doing anything to, right? I just want to import my settings. 
Okay, hopefully you caught what I did. I basically said don't add anything, right? Okay, don't overwrite anything, just import my settings is where I'm really out after. And so it will do a few little styles here. But pretty much, um, okay, so it imported 120 fire styles and almost a thousand settings for my default template. How long did all those a thousand settings take to get right? And those settings actually determined that I needed those 124 styles right from that drawing. Okay, so now I got my settings. Okay, uh, and we need um, some uh, utility blocks. Okay, so and we want all those point styles associated with them. And so, all right, I am going to go uphill here. Sorry, have to bang around a little bit. Go into the symbol set. Okay, and we want out of the utilities, right? Uh, let me see. Okay, we want the general ones, and we're going to pick uh, the filleted ones all the time. Right. So I have this process where I got to go through and do I have, right, one thing I might want to do is go through and collect together and stick all the filleted ones in one drawing, right? So maybe that's something I won't want to do, right? Um, but let's say, okay, I want the UTLFOs in here. Yeah, this is really, really fast to do. Okay, hit the space bar, right back where I was before. Um, I want, uh, you know, the electrical ones in here. And say, okay, and I want uh, the natural gas ones. And I want um, I think I got the util ones, right? We'll be able to find out if I forgot. So 3D will tell me, right? Okay. So I got all the util ones, so I can actually see that right away if I'm paying attention to the command line. And this is pretty simple here. I want the storm drain ones, and I want the sanitary sewer ones. And my boss is perverse, and he likes all the water ones. Whoops. And he likes all the water ones with those elliptical, regular elliptical ones. <laughs> okay, and now over in my point collection, I have a whole bunch of point styles here, right? And I'm just going to spin over here and uh, pick a vault, right? And so there's a typical utility vault. And let's take a look at, you know, so we get two little squares. And we'll go down to the water one. And there's my water vault. And that was pretty easy to do. And as you can see, it's still got the classic elliptical ones from the NCS. Okay, so you got a bunch of choices. Now you just simply decide what you want in your template and go and assemble. Now you may want to assemble, pre-assemble packages for yourself, but we didn't feel that that was probably a pretty good idea since then we're trying to describe to you what was in there. So you got lots of choices. Now I need, you know, uh, another one. Um, I need, uh, you know, property corners. It's real important to the survey guys, and they're going to need out of property, right? Um, I'm going to take all of them. Okay, so there's actually a collection that has every single one in a point styles drawing of all everything that's down in there, right? If I want, I can see in Design Center what they all look like, right? Um, since I've been Windows 7 and even IE, I could browse over there and I can actually see what's in this drawing. 
there's a couple of ways to do that but I'm gonna avoid that for now and just say okay slam all those property corners in here okay um, and let me see um, now we're also going to need some parcel stuff over here and you know basically I went from general and and sorry if I got to switch around a little bit here because I'm doing this in 12 in my styles collection and I want out a simple um, I want uh, three okay I want to, I'm going down my numbers I did all my point styles those are the only point styles I wanted I'm gonna want uh, surfaces yep I like what's over in you know there or I like what's in ILB I have a reasonable decent idea what's in there okay so I'll take my surface styles get those in there and get my space bar and I'm gonna go down and grab um, I'm looking for four here uh, I like simple parcels too that works great for the survey guys they don't need too much uh, detail want the 12 one sorry okay and now I need just a couple of uh, alignment styles. I really don't want all of those. So now I could play this game of go and just grab a couple. So I could use the import here, open you know the simple alignment style, and get a couple of profile views, and I basically assemble myself a task-based template from parts and pieces uh, based on what my needs are. And that's pretty much how it works. It works pretty much that way in 11. All right. The only couple of issues are right you're going to have to do settings right in 11 uh, before or afterwards right okay whereas import allows you at least get the settings slapped over okay in 12 and you know I don't want to save this drawing there are a couple of things you should know right I'm not saving it as that I thought I did a save as okay and a couple of things you should probably want to think about doing every single time um, while you're assembling a template just a couple of little tricks here uh, learn the hard way um, one is you might want to run a purge okay uh, you will have uh, even after you save all these unknowns right uh, you don't technically need to purge them but civil 3d seems to like it better when you do uh, notice you can also tell these are all the varieties right so there are multiple quarter section symbols if you don't want your other guys to be able to change and you know move those away to a different variety of IP block okay you can also purge those blocks out of your template so this will restrict choice inside your template um, layers okay that came out of an IOB right and you know line types you could probably leave alone right okay right other little trick right is do a purge and get rid of the reg apps just a little hint why this works there are technical reasons I don't want to go into but it's a pretty good idea to get rid of all the reg apps of your out of your template right so you're not carrying around QTO stuff and things like that that you don't want in your template so I've moved towards my template I got more stuff now I got other things still to do in my template like add layer states and those sorts of things uh, but I've got the styles I need did it pretty quickly you can assemble something uh, extremely rapidly without a lot of skill 
uh, with a lot of choice, which is what the jump kit's all about. And you're building from standard libraries, so you know what's going on, right, without it becoming rocket science to everybody. So, so how it worked, right? And if we were making a survey bun, you know, come up with a plan before you do this. Wing it's probably not a good idea. What do they not want? What do they do want? Where is it located? Right? Um, and you should document what went in there, right? You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to make a, uh, a list here. Okay, uh, you want to select the right baseline. Is you want object layers set up, <laughs> right? You want to pre-collect some of the features into these little packages that you deploy into multiple task-based ones before you do it. But you can see the same process to make those would be what we just went through, right? You know, and you pretty much want to go style resource drawings in order. Uh, and, you know, it's pretty much, you know, draw by numbers like we learned in kindergarten. I do one, two, three, four, okay, and no rocket science. And, you know, the graphic picture is, there's the graphic picture. So the jump kit breaks things up by those feature collections into multiple collections where you can reach in, grab and drop. And as, you know, we had the 12 here, <laughs> There will actually be subsets of uh, major features, particularly in complex, where we'll have view styles at multiple styles for, you know, ones and fours, ones and fives, and all those kinds of things that are required there, right? Okay, so what should you do about it? Well, the free jump lets you take a look at, you know, what we're pretty much about. Instant on basic, if you're going to start customizing stuff, you really want an instant on basic so you're not pulling your hair out over some really stupid little stuff. For 195 bucks, anybody can afford that. It will save you that much work in about the first 10 minutes, okay? Uh, and then, you know, you can actually put it to work. Once you get an IOB, you can actually put it to work. While you put it to work, you should, do we need this, do we not need this? There's about 80% 80, 80 of what's in there you'll probably never have to do a thing to. If you can get that number to be higher, I have some clients who go, I don't care, I just use what you got. And that works really well for me. And, you know, when you fix stuff, hey, it's fixed, great. I don't worry about it at all. Um, I have other people who, you know, actually do modifications and make things, right? Uh, for them, Jump Kit is a more... Uh, acceptable way to deal with it. So uh, definitely there's 10 to 20 percent, maybe even more, that you will never want to use, even in IOB or even in the jump kit, right? You will never want to use it. So you need to identify those things that you're not going to use now. You know, given you have a jump kit, right, you can always get it back and get it, put it into a template if you need it. I'm going to see if anybody's got any questions. I'd like some questions. Okay, let's see. Uh, one of my users right now wants to know if um, you, will you be able to use your my styles to the new version when it updates, right? So if uh, they happen to be in 11 and they got a my styles folder and they stuff stuffed over there, will it upgrade? Well, one of the things, right, is your my styles. No, those are the ones that you know you have to test without having to test everything else. So you can simply upgrade. You know, those things you put in the My Styles folders, right, and uh, make a 12 copy of it and go and test them in drawings and see if things broke. Uh, there are always, each release, some minor little things that change. Most of the time, the style will actually work or appear to work, but there will be funny little broken things in it that you didn't know because Autodesk changed something. So, um just wanted to make sure everybody got that. That's one reason why you want to separate out your styles, what you've changed from uh, what we got. 
Okay. And uh, here I got, you know, how much does this thing cost? Well, uh, jump kit for NCS4 uh, is $7.95. You buy it now, and we'll give you a 12. Okay, so you'll have both 11 and 12 for $7.95. It's a single site license, meaning it will do a single location. Okay, if you want to do multiple locations, uh, we got a deal for that, of course. Okay. And I don't see any other. Well, uh, somebody said, okay, what does that mean? Um, uh, not everybody, you know, the jump kit is not something that every single user is going to use. <laughs> okay, uh, they're welcome to use the resources. Okay, so if you're in 12 and you know you want to let Bob go up into your development project and pull down something out of complex and put it in, put it into his drawing, that's up to you. Uh, the idea of the jump kit is that you get the resources and for a location, uh, those resources are available to every single seat in the location. Okay, that makes sense. If you have multiple offices, right, uh, we need to talk about that a little bit.